Hi everybody, hi fam, I missed you terribly. Okay, so we're gonna get right into it. First of all, I just wanna let all of you know, I've been getting a lot of message. Um, I wish you were in my country, I wish we could get together, I wish we could just meet. And so I had this idea. My birthday's coming up, November 21st, and I'd like to invite all of you. I'm gonna hold a Zoom mixer. You just never know who you'll meet for all my fams, $35 each person. And during this time, you can come formal or lax or whatever. If you need a hit of fucking energy, you will get it here. If you've been feeling down, if you've fallen off your horse, your throne, whatever, I guarantee you, you're gonna have it. You can just think of me as a spiritual mechanic. Like, I'm serious. I will plug up all your leaks. I will ignite your spark plugs and I will fuel you with high octane fuel so that you can feel the wind in your face when you're soaring. That's the way it's supposed to be. So for those, and I hope it's, I'd love to meet all of you. I am going to leave the details below or just email me for the deets and to reserve your spot. I can hold a, a good chunk. And the email is Nikki880 at gmail.com. N-I-K-I-880 at gmail.com. It's going to be so fucking awesome. All questions are given and received. Anything personal to you or about Nicole or anything you want to ask, nothing is off limits. So this will be our party, November 21st, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, now. A lot of you, I feel right now, are going through where you are receiving a lot of people from your past. You're still wrestling with family members who are critical to stopping you from blossoming in your life. I mean, so much so that you'll notice when you're interchanging any words or anything or interacting with them your luck changes your magic changes for those of you that have a lot of serendipity kisses you'll see that that changes you'll notice right away from whomever enters your life what happens the next day if they're meant for you and if your vibration is going higher or did they just stab it and created a leak and now you're starting to bleed energetically and um, other ways eventually. So in lieu of you guys um, maybe connecting with some toxic members or your exes trying to come back at you, it's, it's interesting because they might say something like, I've changed, um, something happened to remind me of you. I really, you know, let's make this work, we're family. And at this point, you're thinking, okay, I'm going to tell them I want us to meet and I want to take everything out and I want you to hold yourself accountable for all the pain and the trauma you've caused me. I want to take it out. And they're like, sure, sure, any place you want to meet, we'll take it out. And within that call and between the time you'll meet, you'll talk a bit. And no sooner when you talk a bit, as you kind of begin to open up your heart, they'll lash or maybe you're having second thoughts and you're feeling a cascade of trauma, emotions, energy, and you're like, I, I don't know if I can do this. I, I don't know because I'm already remembering everything you did to me, ex, family, whatever. I'm so many things are coming to me and, and you're crying to them. And well, they lash out right there and then. At that point, you have two choices because you're going to notice right after they lash out, you're going to either raise your voice e even higher and become a bigger animal, or you're going to shrink and disintegrate slowly and go out into the world, doubting everything about yourself. You will either take out the abuse, the lashing they just did to you in the rest of the day or two until it, it's enough to get out of your system. 
Or you will find out that their energy of grandioseness, of needing attention fixes, you'll find out that you're starting to be like that with people and you'll go, hold up, that's, that's not me. Like, why am I being so fucking cocky as fuck, right? And at that point, you have to just really look at it and think, am I going to continue to be loyal to them? family, union, sacred, divinity, whatever you label it as, or am I going to be loyal to myself? And that's a real, real critical question because if you're loyal to them and you have to continue to be defensive, defend your right to be, to feel, to be sensitive, to speak your mind, then, and, and especially if you're hurt, you don't have to tiptoe how you say what you say to them. If you can't do that, then it's going to condition you to be in a defense mode. Here's what that means. When life gives you this wonderful opportunity or you meet someone amazing, the very first thing is you're going to start looking for obstacles, twists and turns and secrets and things like that because you're so conditioned to having life hard. You're, you're not accustomed to the energy of being easy. You're in defense mode and defense energy, it needs war. And so that loop is gonna feed itself and you wonder why you're still defending your way to be and question yourself two, three times. Should have I said that? Should I not have said that? Well, you know, I'm not perfect. They're not perfect. So like, if I'm not perfect, like why am I judging them? And all this thing that's going to fuck up your head, major clusterfuck for sure. And here's the worst thing that'll happen. Once you get over this going through life, either lashing out at people or kind of whittling away. And then what will happen is you won't be able to act on opportunities. You'll slough it off. You'll go, okay, tomorrow you, you won't act on it and you let it go until it just evaporates. And it's interesting because you have really two choices in life to grab it and embrace it or to defend against it. Because when you're fragmented inside and you're separated from self, you're fearful. And so everything that comes to you, you'll feel there'll be something that's there that's going to attack you at some point in time. And that's called the ego. No one dismisses something that he or she considers a part of themselves. So the ego being a part of your nature, you're going to listen, honor, and bow down to, especially when you're fearful. And it's not so much how you're, you respond to the ego, but what you believe you are because of it. Because belief is an ego function. And a lot of people think that they would need what actually hurts them. So they hang on to the ego and then they have it lead them. Those of you that are rich in giving and energy and your time and your love and all that are the ones that can afford to be charitable, loving. But to the ego, to give means that you will be without. There's a loss somewhere. So it calculates, it plays tic-tac-toe, which means you're adding up how much you gave in this relationship or a person you meet and they're giving and you're doing it constantly. That tells you where you are. So where is this leading you? Well, with the ego, it has to cling to protection because you no longer trust your heart. You no longer feel you have protection. You're no longer connected to your spirit. Who knows?
when we associate giving with losing or sacrifice, then we're definitely disconnected from God, from spirit, from source. Because that is truly an endless supply of all the riches and abundance and you never being without. And so when you're like that, you will only give because you believe that you will get something better and that what you're letting go of is not that much more of a use for you. Giving to get is the law of ego and it's a, that is the base of its living. And for those of you, of us, who are in that kind of existence, it can't be escaped. And therefore, we have to evaluate, or rather the ego evaluates itself in relation to other egos. Because that's how it confirms to itself it exists. So it'll always be preoccupied with the idea or belief of scarcity because that's what gave birth to it in the first place. So it convinces itself that it's very completely truthful and real and it exists by perceiving other egos, egos, egos as real. So it's very easy to get your ego, your ego, so it's very easy to get your ego bruised or self-inflated ego. You hear that all the time. Self-esteem will always be susceptible to vulnerability by stress because the ego perceives it as a stress, as a threat. So your self-esteem, if it's weak in your life right now, if you're stressed out and you're living an existence in your ego, then your self-esteem is no longer intact. Your balls are not hanging, they're rolling out the door. It is the worst place to be. Since the ego lives by comparing itself, it is not interested or nor can even grasp the idea of reciprocity. So think about that for a second. Think who you're with, family, toxic members, boyfriend, girlfriend. There is no reciprocity because a narc is full ego. So it can never be generous because it's always afraid of what it'll lose. So the ego can't just give away a lot in abundance and all that because it was made as a substitute for it. So that is why it needs to get all the time. The ego sees itself as a loan. So it needs to unite with other egos because of its fearful state to begin with. It's all by itself. Or it needs to attack in its attempts to just show its strength. Again, that's what it does. The ego is completely disconnected from the spirit, but it is aware that it is rejected from something a lot higher than itself. So it's always looking for a fight. For those of us that have an ego and live in there, it means there'll be harsh self-judgment because the ego will always have a need to prove. So it's defensive or it will challenge you. The spirit will not challenge you. It has no need to prove, it knows. The ego can survive without judgment, absolutely. And it is most judgmental with itself. Heads up, everybody. Those of us that can turn away from conflict and pain after, after venting and crying and feeling all that harsh energy, those of us that have learned not to judge ourselves harshly, and believe me, that is, that is, that is a full stop of, of, of where it ends. It's not even about them. Because once we realize what we let them get away with, it is devastating to know that we put ourselves in such jeopardy. But when you have learned to not judge yourself so harshly, everyone will want to be around you. 
because you'll be so easy to be around because you won't judge others. Knowledge will never involve comparisons, none whatsoever. And again, no one dismisses something that he or she considers part of themselves. So if you have someone, it would hurt too much. So if you have someone, an ex or a family member, and there's neglect, there's lashing out, there's harsh words, there's ignoring, there's not even taking you seriously, not even wanting to know where your emotions are with them, towards them, then you know what you're dealing with. It's, it's not a family. And that's why I also want to do this mixer because a lot of you don't have anyone that have reached your energy levels where you are. So you don't have anywhere to co-mingle and get higher with someone who's more electric than you are. You are in your own bubble, which is good, but for how long? Come join me on my birthday. I celebrate all of you with me. I'm so excited, I can't even wait to see you. And in this way, we can get to know each other and really be like a family, not just beautiful comments and beautiful words, but feel each other's energies. So get that information to me. If you want to reserve your spot, email niki880gmail.com. I so hope and I'm looking forward to seeing you. Okay, that's going to be so awesome. Okay, later. Bye.